So I'm going to focus in on figure three here because it has some, um, uh, some questions to it that I just wanted to try to help clarify. And then I'll talk a little bit about this uh, length tension as well and try to help clarify potential issues with that. So in figure three, they're asking for uh, plotting that instantaneous heart rate with agonist and antagonist appli uh, application. And so I have one uh, set of data that's, um, that's up here uh, from one group. And uh, the top here is our EKG, that's the electrical activity. The bottom is our myogram. And uh, this group's contraction force is relatively weak, but we can uh, still be able to use the data. So I'm gonna zoom out using the double mountains to be able to see the entire data set. And, and then I'm gonna move over and navigate to the beginning. Um, here's where we are before drug. I'm gonna basically just, um, I wanna get an interbeat interval here. This group could actually use the EKG to measure this interbeat interval and be really nice and clean. Um, or you can use your myogram if you don't happen to have an EKG. So let me just show you what that looks like in terms of um, using a myogram. So I've set the blue cursors here and here, and then I'm gonna click on the cross between the two cursors to zoom between the two cursors. And if I wanted to measure an interbeat interval, for example, here, what I can do is place one cursor at the peak here and another cursor at the peak of this um, ventricular myogram contraction to be able to determine the T2 minus T1, which is 1.57 seconds. So that's what we have at rest. Um, if we, uh, you measure a couple of those and then want to put them into the Excel spreadsheet. And so that would um, go into this uh, component here. This says instantaneous heart rate. So you're not going to put the interbeat interval in there. You're going to take that interbeat interval and then um, uh, calculate from that uh, the number of beats that you get per minute from that single interbeat interval. Okay. So um, then what you, uh, you put in your, your total here. So if your interview interval was one second, for example, then um, how many beats would fit in a minute, uh, in 60 seconds? And it would be um, 60, so 60 beats per minute. Anyway, you put your instantaneous heart rate uh, numbers here. It would affect your average. It automatically populates the average and the standard deviation for you. Isopaternal, uh, after the treatment of isopaternal, let's see what that looks like. In this case, um, some of you guys don't you don't have isoparanol as the next one, but this is how this one's set up. So let's go ahead and go through it. Um, so after the treatment of isoparanol, um, you can see we'll uh, we'll zoom out a little bit that there's a lot of data here. It's pretty noisy, and um, that they've done they measured here so that they began the isoparanol and they did a lot of different treatments before they finally switched to propranolol around here. So we're going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little bit more clearly. Here's isoteranol and the different drops that they added. And what we're going to do is move over to one of the later ones before they added the propranolol to try to get a measurement of what the interbeat interval was here. Um, to reset where the, the cursors are, they're hidden right here. I'm just going to click on this double uh, cursor line there. That's great. And then um, I'm going to zoom in on this um, part right here because it's kind of hard to see. And I'm going to click on the... Um, zoom between two cursors line. And now what I'm going to do is measure from the peak here to the peak here to be able to measure the interbeat interval. And, um, and then that will, that will give me a reading, 1.25, which is less than what we had before. So that indicates that there's likely um, an accelerated heart rate due to the presentation of this beta agonist. So what we want, uh, then what we have is propranolol. Propranolol is a beta antagonist. It's being added afterwards, so it's, it's supposed to block what the um, agonist does. And you can see that we're not going to measure it right away here because it, it hasn't really had a chance to take effect. We're going to pick one of the later ones to work on and uh, get the average from that. So out here, it looks pretty... Um, uh, it's, they've, uh, it's one of their last readings that they have of it. I'm going to uh, bring over the cursor, so I'm going to click on it here, bring them over, and then I'm going to measure what the interview interval is here. So we'll put one here, and then the one right along in here approximately, and see what it is. Okay, so now the interview interval is 2.5 seconds. So that's a lot longer of an interview interval. So fewer of those beats would actually fit into a minute. You're going to have a slower heart rate. Um, so you'll measure a couple of those and put those numbers into the Excel spreadsheet. And then from the Excel spreadsheet, 
That'll give you an average and a standard deviation. You will need to be able to calculate what the percent change is. This is what the um, this is what it, the equation is. Um, after treatment versus before the treatment divided by before treatment times 100. And then you can use that to make your calculations here. As I said in class, one of the things that you're going to want to do is here's your resting thing, percent change for, uh, relative to what? Here they have it as ISO versus rest. And here they have uh, propranolol versus iso, uh, isoproteranol. So what if you had a different drug? What if you had um, the um, if you had the um, pilocarpine atropine mix, for example. Pilocarpine would go here, you type in pilocarpine at the top here. Atropine, you put in, type it in here, um, if you wanted to help keep it straight. Um, but ultimately, the thing that's going to matter is what you type in here and what you actually write in for your isopropanol and your propanolol, or these different drug conditions. Um, this number here will end up changing your, um, your uh, overall number that you have uh, in the graph. You can see how that, I just made a modification there to demonstrate. I'm going to uh, undo that. Um, and so you can see what the percent change is there. Um, and you can, a similar type of process you can do with the cardiac glycosides. You're also measuring force here, the force of contraction that you have. If your force of contraction is really small, like these guys, it's a really small amount of uh, force of contraction here. Do your best to get the measurements you can. They're looking at 0 0.001 pushing the limits of the detectability um, of this um, force transducer. And with some of them, um, they get a, me a measurement of, I'll just move it over a little bit to illustrate. They end up getting a measurement of something like 0, uh, 0, 0 uh, rather than um, 0 0.01. And so if it reads a 0, 0.00, but obviously you have one cursor here and one cursor here, then you're going to want to um, um, just uh, I wouldn't measure that one because it's clearly not detecting that difference well enough. Um, then what you're um, doing, uh, the next thing that you're going to want to do is plug in those numbers, put them into the Excel spreadsheet. I think um, you're almost there. The last thing that you're going to want to do is to uh, do the Starling's Law test here. So I'm going to just open up um, that one really